Well, after nine months now, I've noticed that uh, President Trump and Joe Biden have something important in common. Let's talk about what that is. Hi, everybody. I'm Bill Whittle here with Steve Green and Scott Otten. This is your right angle uh, called uh, Cut the Feed. Uh, <laughs> one of the things we noticed about Donald Trump uh, when he was president, that as he started to uh, get into some of the points he wanted to make, it was not uncommon for networks, especially CNN, to decide that the president of the United States speaking in an uncensored manner directly to the American people was not a particularly newsworthy use of our 24 hour a day news cycle time. And how many times did we see CNN basically and other networks as well simply cut off Donald Trump because they didn't like what he was about to say? Who do you think you are? Now we find, however, that the exact same thing is happening with President Biden. Uh, here's a clip where uh, we see President Biden uh, about to ask a question and here is the upcoming result. Can I ask you a question? Of course. One of the things that uh, I've been working on with some others is... Now, one or two times like this, you probably don't have a whole lot to really make a case about, but Joe Biden has also repeatedly said, I've been instructed to come out here. I've been given a list. I've been told to ask these people to ask these questions, which is, an, it, which is an, it's not just an open admission. It's an embarrassing admission of the fact that I've been told uh, who I should call on in what order, because I know what questions I'm going to get and probably I've been briefed on them and uh, hopefully they won't be too embarrassing. Uh, Scott, it's a simple question, really. Um, does the president of the United States have an obligation to answer questions from reporters in an unbiased fashion? And let me rephrase that. Does the president of the United States have an obligation to take questions from reporters without knowing who they are in advance and what they're going to ask? I don't think he has an obligation to do so, but it certainly behooves him to do so. I mean, you expect you presidents that's president's to see coming. No, I, I don't think a president is obligated to have a press conference, uh, but... It looks better to the public if you're open about what you're talking about, you know, and it, he doesn't there's no specification in the Constitution that says the president needs to meet with the media every so often or any specific sequence of times or needs to meet with a group or an individual. And frankly, White Houses throughout time have handpicked the people that they want to have come in and interview them um, and have been have manipulated that White House briefing room process to a certain extent. In this particular case, um, all I can tell you is having Having seen the clip on Twitter, which, by the way, was initiated or at least first sent out on Twitter uh, by, I believe it was the RNC, the Republican National Committee chairman, uh, who sent this out. Um, and then if you look, if you Google the question, you'll see that most of the news stories are coming from uh, more of the right leaning papers. The ones that are not are the organizations like Fox News, uh, the ones that are not right leaning or that therefore are left leaning, like The Washington Post and CNN. And there was another website I looked at called The Week, uh, basically said, oh, look, this is a, they didn't use this phrase, but it's a tempest in a teapot because what, what really happened with this particular clip uh, that was, they say, taken out of context is something that happens every day with uh, White House situations. Essentially, they have this thing that they call a press spray. And that is uh, the president is going to be involved in some sort of meeting with some group of people. In this case, I believe it was related to uh, wildfires in Idaho or something like that. And uh, so he's going to be involved in a meeting and they give the press corps who's following the president around the country an opportunity to come in, spray the room, get some video, get some atmospherics so that they'll have something to talk over when they have their, their news. And then once the actual meeting starts, they shuffle the media out of there and they shut down that feed that goes out to, to other media outlets who get to see that, that spray remotely. So the Washington Post, CNN and theweek.com are all reporting that this was an ordinary press spray. And the reason why it stopped just as the president started to speak was because the meeting was beginning and the press spray was over. And so they shuffled the media out of the room. It was the White House uh, press feed. It was the White House feed that was cut. Yeah, they it, do. It, they it didn't do go a to feed. CNN. It went to the White House. So yes, you're asking do. me to believe. No, hang on. Let that. me clarify before you go too far down this path, because when the press spray happens, the White House sends a feed out to those media organizations that are not traveling with the president. They can see this remotely, but they cut that off at the same time that they shuffle CNN and everybody else out of the room. You, you you don't find it interesting that it wasn't a question of they they were they didn't cut Biden off while Biden was being questioned. 
They cut Biden off while Biden was asking a question. Yeah, he was starting to ask a question, they say, of the people he was he, meeting he, with, because he was he was trying to gather information about the situation on the ground there, what's going on there. And so it wasn't a it wasn't a, a media question and answer period. It was a meeting that was about to happen. So once the president started asking that question, that was the signal that the press spray is over. Get out so the president can have a meeting with these people. Are you saying that you think that Joe Biden answers as many questions as the last 10 presidents have previously? I am not able to evaluate that. I haven't put together the spreadsheet on that. My guess would be no. Um, he He's obviously not as facile before the camera as some, including the most recent president who really enjoyed getting up there and fielding as many questions as possible. Some presidents have been better. Some presidents have been worse. He's not on the list of the, you know, the most photogenic and loquacious presidents I've ever met. Uh, Steve, take Joe Biden out of it. When CNN uh, decides that the president of the United States is no longer uh, worth covering, who, who, do, who, who do they think they are? I mean, who do they think they are? Uh, they it's one they're... thing. It's one thing to let him talk and then have your experts come in and spin everything to tell you what he really meant and what he really said. But to simply cut away from the president of the United States in the middle of a sentence. Who did who who is making those decisions and who's making the decisions to cut away from Joe Biden on the White House feed? And who is the person who is telling Joe Biden? Because Joe Biden has said it three or four times now. I have been instructed to call on these people who is instructing him. And why is this happening? Because my understanding is that the president of the United States doesn't get actually instructed by anybody. Well, I'll, I'll get to that part in a moment. Um, one of the most interesting things I've ever seen, this is new to me. I've never seen this before. And now I've seen it uh, more than once. Uh, occasionally during one of the, the president's uh, either addresses or, or press conferences. Well, he usually gives an address and then he may or may not take questions after. But when he does take questions after, occasionally you get an over the shoulder shot and you can see on his notepad, there's a, there's a sheet of paper there that has headshots. And those headshots are of the reporters. And then there's a, a little paragraph. So there's pictures. There's pictures now is what you're saying. Yeah, and there's a paragraph of text next to each face. What I can't tell is, and it's it's too much text to just be, uh, you know, the the headshot and the the name is you know Jake Tapper. There's just there's too much text there. So what I'm dying to know is what does that stuff say? Is is it the questions? Is you know is the press and the White House colluding in advance to for this doddering old uh, decrepit man? I don't know because the, the resolution isn't there. I can't read it. But what I can tell you is there, there are two or three sentences next to every little headshot. And I want to know what they say. I'm just I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm dying for that. That would be such a great glimpse inside this White House. As to actually who's in charge, we got an answer on this one last May. It was May 3rd of this year. Uh, the, uh, the, the Sunday Times, a British publication, ran a piece that was headlined, Who's Really Running Biden's White House? Step forward, President Klain. And Klain, I thought his name was Biden. Now, you may think that's a typically snarky sort of uh, British headline, uh, the President Klain reference, but it's not. Uh, Ron Klain is Joe Biden's chief of staff. And according to this report from uh, from last May in the in the Times, Washington, this is an exact quote, Washington insiders delight in assigning the White House chief of staff this mischievous title as the driving force behind the actual president. Well, <laughs> Joe Biden. Uh, there's more. The man himself, Ron Klain, would never describe himself this way, but his firm grip on the levers of government has enabled the 78-year-old president, and this part has not aged well at all, has allowed, or enabled the 78-year-old president to cruise through his first 100 days in office without breaking a sweat. Now, the thing about levers is... Um, they you, you can only move them in one direction at a time. So if Ron Klain is the guy with his hands on the levers of government, then yes, he is effectively the president because Joe Biden's too old and too weak to wrestle those levers back. Let's face it. Um, and what's really interesting about this story is it also says, and this again is a quote, 
He, Klain, is determined to secure Biden's place in the pantheon of presidents with Franklin Roosevelt and Lyndon Johnson, who built the American welfare state. Hmm. But let me tell you something. Joe Biden, or President Klain, has no clout on Capitol Hill, very little clout. In order to get legislation through Congress, which is like herding cats, you've got to have clout. And clout, you get it in three ways. you got to be loved, feared, or respected, hopefully a little bit of all three. Joe Biden has gotten like one major piece of legislation through Congress, and that was the one they were going to pass anyway, which was the additional $2 trillion stimulus package last spring. Since then, uh, they've gone back and forth on this. Maybe it's a trillion dollar. Maybe it's $3.5 trillion. Maybe there are tax increases. Oh, we're hiding the tax increases. Uh, Infrastructure bill. This stuff, it's a Democrat's wet dream. And yet Biden, I'm sorry, Klain, I keep making that mistake. President Klain doesn't have the clout to get this signature legislation through a Congress that is sitting on a time bomb called the 2022 elections. So whoever you want to say is in charge of this White House, whoever you want to say is pushing the levers or telling Joe who he can talk to or whose questions he should take, all I can say is they really suck at this stuff. <laughs> Well, I'm glad that our journalists uh, are uh, are delightfully tittering about the mischievous uh, announcement of the fact that this uh, chief of staff is actually the president of the United States. And I do yeah. find it somewhat interesting that they talk about his firm command on the levers of government. Hmm. My understanding that the chief of staff would have a firm command on the staff of the White House. Yeah. The levers of government are not the purview of the chief of staff of the White House of the United States. The, to openly brag about this man having having his firm hand, and, and we've seen the results of that firm hand in Afghanistan and other places as well, on the levers of government is the kind of thing that is so simple that, that it never gets asked. It is really one of these force for the trees questions. What's wrong with that? Well, what's wrong with that is, Klain was not on the ballot this is supposed to be a government that is elected by the people. If the person making the decisions, the person with the hands on the levers of power, the person who's telling the person who people thought they elected, that you don't answer these questions, turn around, go away, walk in, ask this guy, ask that guy, then leave. If somebody is directing the president of the United States actions, and that person's not on the ballot, then we got a real, real, real problem. And if our problem is so big that the people who are actually doing this are bragging about it, then we really ought to start asking ourselves some very serious questions about what kind of government we actually have. And one of the one of the small group of journalists out there that's actually doing this is Sky News Australia, who whose reporting on American politics has been exemplary. They don't have any problem whatsoever saying on a daily basis that this person is not mentally capable of running a subway store, let alone the most powerful nation in the history of the world. And um, I suspect that title will not be lasting very long if uh, President Klain keeps his firm grip on the levers of power. For Steve Green and Scott Ott, I'm Bill Whittle. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Right Angle. 